and symbolic, serving as a call to action to raise awareness and stand united against the pervasive scourge that is human trafficking. Over the past 90 days, the mon under the moniker of Operation Renewed Hope, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office's Human Trafficking Squad conducted a number of investigative initiatives to combat the insidious crime of human trafficking. We targeted this crime through a multi-pronged approach by conducting undercover streetwalker and hotel and motel operations, along with online chats where our undercover investigations, undercover investigators posed as minors available for sex, as well as guardians selling children for sex. Our human trafficking efforts are constant, but as we approach the holiday season where children are out of school and spending much more time online, I wanted to ensure that our children would be protected and those wanting to pay for sex and fuel the sex trade were not getting a free pass because of the holidays. Today I stand here before you to share the results of our efforts. Over the last 90 days, we arrested 123 individuals who were charged with human trafficking or trafficking related charges. These 123 arrests transcend mere statistics. They represent our commitment to protect the innocent and our resolute efforts to safeguard the most vulnerable members of our community. We are not merely apprehending wrongdoers. We are ensuring no one falls into the clutches of these criminals who would exploit and inflict harm upon them. In the course of our undercover operations, we have come face to face with individuals from all walks of life. Some of who held positions of trust and authority that shockingly included a teacher, a nurse, basketball coach, and a person employed by a spiritual organization. These are individuals who betrayed our trust. During this facet of the operation, these individuals engaged with undercover detectives who were posing as underage girls and boys. And these, criminal, these criminals knowingly sought to engage in sexual acts with each of them. One notable arrest sheds light on the betrayal of trust I just mentioned. A former science teacher at James Elementary, 28-year-old James Villacorteza, an individual entrusted with shaping young minds. Operation Renewed Hope also targeted the driving force behind prostitution, the individuals known as Johns, those who fuel the demand. Our Johns portion of the operation aimed to dismantle the market that courses many into the heroin world of sex work. This is where we came into contact with Zen Dung, who clearly did not learn his lesson. In May of 2022, he was arrested for traveling to have sex with a minor who turned out to be one of our undercover detectives. He was charged with human trafficking, and at the time you would have thought that it, this would have been enough to stop him and make him rethink his choices. We were wrong. Detectives arrested him again for soliciting another to commit prostitution. We also focused on the darkest corners where detectives posed as a family member, such as a parent, step-parent, aunt, uncle, who were offering their underage, uh, underage, offering their underage child to have sex with others. The fact that individuals willingly sought such heinous activities despite knowing the children's ages is abhorrent and deserves our collective contempt. Perhaps the most alarming trend our detectives observed was the possess possession of firearms by some of these individuals. As if the sexual exploitation is not damaging enough, who knows what their true intentions were with the firearms they possessed. To our dedicated team, I extend my deepest gratitude. Thank you for serving as this shield the shield that protects our community from the unimaginable consequences that could unfold if not for your efforts. Since we created the Human Trafficking Unit in 2021, these men and women 
have arrested more than 600 individuals who fuel the demand for human trafficking. Even more important, we have rescued 28 victims from the grasp of human trafficking. That's 28 individuals whose lives were quite possibly saved. We also, remain safe, we also remain committed to safeguarding our community through prevention, assisting with treatment and recovery efforts, and education through presentations on identifying the signs of someone or anyone who's a victim of human trafficking. The fight against human trafficking is not one that law enforcement can accomplish alone. It is a shared responsibility that extends to each member of our community. And I urge everyone to stay vigilant and report instances of suspected human trafficking victims so that together we can fortify our defense against those who seek to traffic another human being for sex. On this National Day of Awareness and always, prevention, education, and awareness will always be our most valuable tool. At this time, I'll take any questions. Uh, without getting into too many details and revealing uh, our under, uh, investigative techniques, we posed as a lot of different individuals. We posed as aunt, uncles, grandparents. Uh, we would pose as step parents, saying that, hey, we have a 10 year old, uh, uh, 11 year old, a 12 year old that we're willing and it's available for uh, sex acts. These individuals, six of them that we charged with human trafficking, were individuals who traveled to come have sex with these minors, these young children. So, I'm sure the suspects, uh, what do the suspects say to you after they realize they've been caught? These suspects know what they're doing is wrong. Even a few of them that they arrested and were seeing a trend where they drop their cell phones, they take their cell phones somewhere else before they show up to have sex with this young child because they don't want their, their wife uh, to be able to track the, where they're at. So they know what they're doing is wrong. When they get caught, when they realize they fell for it, what do they say? You, you know, it, it's different. Uh, the, the human trafficking detectives will tell you, uh, s some immediately break down and cry. Uh, some say that they have a problem, they need more help, and some fight like hell because they don't want to go back to jail, and they're most importantly embarrassed knowing that their significant other, their, their wife, is going to find out what they're truly up to. Again, they go to great lengths to, to travel, to have sex with a young child. Uh, they even hide their cell phones, and like I mentioned uh, during the speech here, alarming now to see that some of them, and this is just recent, over since 2021, what we're seeing is now they're traveling with firearms. One, one had a gun on them, one was in the glove box. When they take this child in their car, when they, why would you need a gun to come have sex with a child? What were their true intentions? This is, this is the part that, 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 that's even more concerning than them just trying to have this, this illegal, incredibly heinous act with a, with a young person. Yeah, great question. I think when you talk about human trafficking, this is something that just came to light over probably the past year and a half to two years. There were no resources. If you had the courage to come forward, we didn't have the ability to try to help you out. We would collect our investigative money, some of the trustful money we have for investigations, purchasing narcotics, whatever it is, and buy them a hotel for a night or two and then scratch our heads like, what do we do next? Now there's so many different organizations and partnerships that we have, Sale of Freedom, I mean, and the list goes on and on and on. They immediately come with us. Matter of fact, they come with us when we do these different. If we're targeting prostitutes that are coming, trying to free them from the sex trade, if we're targeting the Johns, who, whatever the case and scenario may be, these non-government entities are with us. They don't want to talk to law enforcement. They want to talk to someone that they can trust. Well, it's been extremely productive when someone who works at this organi organization comes and says, that used to be me. You used to be me. If you have the courage to, to take that, that first step forward, if you're courageous enough, we can get you the help. And they're getting them that respite care. A lot of them are dope sick because they have them addicted at such high levels. The, the minute that they start to become sober, they get so sick. So they'll do anything to, to keep that high because 
I can only imagine what the physical trauma is when you're going through uh, those type of symptom symptoms. So we work hard, we work well, we have some phenomenal partnerships in the Tampa Bay area. For anyone out there that's a victim of human trafficking, there is help available. It's as simple as making a phone call. Well, I would hope that they're not after this. Uh, our detectives do notify their employer to safeguard our community. One was a boys basketball coach in Wesley Chapel. One was a, a counselor at an Episcopalian uh, summer camp uh, for grief counseling. Uh, one, one is a nurse at a mental health facility. So you're already vulnerable. You're already suffering from some type of mental health crisis. These are the individuals that we place in these high levels of trust to put our children with, to put our people suffering from mental health, someone going through some type of grief counseling. I would hope to believe that none of them have their job and none of them will ever hold these types of positions again where they can take advantage of another human being. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Stay safe.